Hi everyone. So today we're going to start talking about circles. And this unit is pretty short. There's just a couple of things about circles that we have to cover. And today is really a big bulk of it. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. This first video is going to cover a lot of the vocabulary that we talk about with circles. And then we'll get into some of the more mathematical stuff and the theorems in the second video. I do need you to watch both for this first lesson. Okay, so some parts of a circle that you may not know about a central angle is an angle with its center, I'm sorry, with its vertex at the center of the circle. So here's the center of the circle at O. So the central angle would be this angle here. Okay, that angle is called a central angle. Okay, so it's an angle inside of a circle where the center, the vertex is at the center. Okay? What this sentence is saying, the arc of the circle in the interior angle is said to be intercepted by the angle. What that really means is that, see, I've got this angle here. The arc, and remember, arc is like a piece of the outside of the circle that's kind of sandwiched in between that angle. That's called the intercepted arc. Okay. Oh, come on, D. That is an intercepted arc. It's intercepted by the two ends of the angle. Okay? And we can measure arcs with degree measures as well. So we're not talking about the length of the arc. We're talking about how many degrees out of the whole circle is that arc measure. Remember, a circle has 360 degrees. So the measure of this arc would be something out of those 360 degrees. Right? If I were to add up all the arcs all the way around the circle, I would get 360. Because I can say that the measure of that intercepted arc is the same as the measure of its central angle. And that's what those x's are there to represent. Is that this, this central angle here, whatever angle that is, that's the same measurement I would say this arc is. Okay. So if that angle in the middle was 40 degrees, I would call that intercepted arc, meaning the arc in between the angle, 40 degrees. Some more words, some different kinds of arcs. There's what's called a minor arc, and there's what's called a major arc. A minor arc is a measure of less than 180, which means less than halfway around the circle. And if you were to pick any two points on a circle, it's the shortest distance between those two points. So, for example, from M to N, if these are my two points on a circle, the minor arc would be going this way from M to N, okay? And I label that with two letters, almost how I would label a segment. So I want to say I'm going from M to N, okay? And if I want the shortest path between M and N, I just write M, N with this little arc symbol over it. Okay, that is an arc. That's not straight like a segment. That's an arc. Now, a major arc goes more than halfway around the circle, which means it's a less direct way of getting from point A to point B, or in this case, from point M to point N. Because if I told you I wanted you to walk from M to N, sure, you could walk this way, or you could walk this way. You could walk all the way around backwards. And that is what's called a major arc. Now, to name that major arc, to make it look different from this arc, so you can tell the difference, major arcs use three letters. And so what I need is I need to find some point that's between M and N to throw in there as well. So in this case, I have point L here. So I'm going to name this arc M L N, And that kind of gives me my direction. I'm going from M to L to N and putting one big arc over top of that. Okay? And then a semicircle, you probably already know that a semicircle is half of a circle. Um, in, in this context, it's an arc of 180 degrees. So if I took this circle here and I drew a line right through the middle of the circle and I made this, let's say, A and B, then arc AB would have 180 degrees in it because it's half of the circle. And actually this one you can't really do as a minor or a major because they're both halfway. Okay, So those would just be called semicircles. So less than 180 is a minor arc, more than 180 is a major arc, and exactly 180 is a semicircle. 
Okay, a chord. A chord is a segment, and that's really the most important thing to know about chords, is that they are segments that connect any two points on a circle. So when we label them, which you'll see down here, we label them just as you would name a segment. So MN, that's talking about this line segment here between M and N, that's what's called a chord. I could pick any other points on this circle and connect them, and that would also be a chord. So that's a chord. I could do a chord like this. That's a chord. Chord is any segment where the ends of the segment are sitting on the circle itself. So now let's try naming the following. A central angle. Well, remember that a central angle has its vertex right at the center of the circle. So, in this case, the center of the circle is here. My angle would be this. So I would say angle, because I'm naming an angle, M-O-N. That's a central angle. A minor arc would be an arc that goes less than halfway around the circle. Now we talked about MN a minute ago, so that would work. Do you think ML would also work? That's less than halfway around the circle, so we could say ML. Okay. Um, L to N is kind of a toss-up. It looks like that might be exactly half, maybe a little less. But um, for sure, we could say ML and MN were minor arcs. A major arc is where you're going more than halfway around the circle. So the example we used a minute ago was MLN, because you can travel kind of backwards between those. So we could say MLN. I could also do something like MNL, and that means go in this direction. MNL. So start at M, go to N, and then travel to L. So the order of the letters does matter. Okay, the first letter is where you're starting, the last letter is where you're ending, and then this kind of tells you the direction that you're going in in between. And then a chord is just a segment, segment anywhere on the circle. So I would say right now we have chord MN listed. Okay. Quick theorem for you. This looks like a lot of blah, 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 all right, but I'm going to sum it up for you very quickly. Um, it says if two arcs have the same measures, then they are congruent and their chords are congruent. And it also says if two chords have the same length, meaning they're congruent, their minor arcs have the same measure. So basically here's what that's saying. If you have on a circle two angles that are congruent, then wouldn't it make sense that their arcs are congruent? So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then we know A to B is congruent to C to D because the angle matches the arc. Okay, So if these two are equal, then these two are equal. And also the measure of that chord that's formed, so the chords would be like from A to B and C to D, if those are congruent, then I also know that my arcs are congruent, which would then let me know that my angles are congruent. So all of those things are real closely related. All right, so all this theorem is saying is when you have congruent angles, you have congruent arcs. All right, if you have congruent arcs, you have congruent chords. And if you have congruent chords, then you have congruent arcs and angles as well. So you can kind of get between any combination of those things, the angles, the arcs, and the chords. That's going to do it for this video. The next video will jump into a little more, um, little more math. This just kind of covered all of the vocabulary and definitions you're going to need to know. Um, definitely make sure you check out the examples in the next video.